Welcome to Radio Static Productions. Thank you for tuning in. We put these stories together to entertain, give you a chance to just sit back and listen to some mystery stories. Stay tuned. Here is Chapter 10 of No Picket Fences, Thicker Than Mud. This is the 10th and final part of our series. So if you haven't been here before, please go back to the playlist, listen to the other stories, put it all together and see if you can figure it out. And now a message from our sponsors. Are you frustrated that your snack crackers fall apart at your parties or that they get mushy when you put them on your casseroles? Try potato shovels. We use only the best second grade potatoes to keep them economical. They're sliced pressed and fried, then sprayed with our secret food-grade polymers and flavors. They won't break while dipping, won't get soggy on your casseroles. They stay crunchy all day. Potato shovels are not responsible for extreme thirst, broken teeth, or ringing of the ears. Now, back to our story. Fancy Pants gave Barney an elbow to the ribs. Keep quiet, you crazy fool, or I will shoot. Meanwhile, I was about to come out of cover and draw his attention to me instead, but I froze. Out of nowhere from the open gate, a small-framed man, and not very tall, came running stealthily at full speed. He slammed into Fancy Pants so hard he bulldozed him to the muddy, sloppy ground of the scrapyard. He then pinned him there. Barney put his hand on this man's shoulder, and I couldn't hear what he said. This small frame man must be Barney's older brother, Tim. Fancy Pants started struggling to get up and get his gun. Barney grabbed the gun. It was caked in mud. I scrambled the best I could through the mud towards them. It was hard to move in this muck. I was starting to get winded. <laughs> Barney, can he hold him? Hold on a bit longer. I'll help. Barney waved and then knelt down behind his brother on top of Mr. Fancy Pants. The mud was almost a foot thick in spots and sloppy. It was like trying to run through thick oatmeal. When I got there, I pulled out my thirty-eight and grabbed Mr. Fancy Pants by the hair, showed it to him. His face was the only thing not covered in mud. See this? Now hold still, or I'll use it. Barney and his brother Tim jumped off him and backed off. Barney just smiled at me, put his arm around his shaking older brother, and they walked to the house. They both let out a big howl. The cops did show up just moments later took Fancy Pants, mud and all, into cuffs and stuffed him in the patrol car. The patrol car didn't dare drive to the back of the yard. Everyone got out, including the bloodhounds, and headed to the back. Before I could tell them about the shortcut, they went down the muddy road. One officer yelled, The mud that was in Europe wasn't as bad as this. I would say it took about ten minutes. You could hear the hounds barking, the officers yelling, Freeze! That all came from the back of the scrapyard. I sat on one of the wooden crates and waited for Eddie, since he was my ride here. The soft, dusty clay sand of the scrapyard had turned into a sloppy mess, a consistency of melted ice cream or mashed potatoes, and in some parts thick as oatmeal. And there's no packed gravel to it anymore, or maybe over time the dirt had just changed. It was knee-deep in spots. It was really unbelievable. I don't remember it being like this when I was younger, but then I don't think I ever came here after a heavy rain. Just walking made splatter marks on your clothes, and if you hit a really wet spot, it would splash halfway up your body. I laughed at myself remembering what Donna had said. You don't want to be here after a rain. When everyone showed up from the back of the yard, there wasn't a clean uniform to be seen. The hound dogs didn't seem to care. It was just a game to them. Eddie came over and sat by me. 
We stuck around in case any of the investigating officers had any questions. We were not looking forward to the walk back to the car. The shortcut isn't as muddy as the road, and it's easier walking. Eddie said, We all look like creatures from the Black Lagoon, but an easier walk would be nice. What in the world was that howling? Oh, that was Barney and his brother Tim. I guess it's a distress call between him and his brother. With all the noise of the yard when it's busy, that would get someone's attention quicker. Eddie said, That sound travels well. I had a hard time keeping my laughter in check. Apparently Barney had sabotaged that old car hood that was covering the stolen items. He added extra weight to it that made it hard to be picked up and held in place. You couldn't lift it out of the way. Old Scar Nose even tried to prop it up, but he accidentally kicked what was propping it up, and it slammed on his foot. The ground is slippery back there. Yep, slipperier than cow poo on cardboard. It's not soupy like it is up here. I said, well, maybe we should go out the gate and walk the outside of the fence. That sounds like a good idea. All the antiquities that were stolen from the museum are now accounted for. Even an old crossbow and some of the bolts. I'm going to have the coroner look at them and see if they're a match to the weapon that killed Jimmy the Flip. There's a lot of charges against these two. They did steal the truck from the florists. I saw the list of items. They were odd. Buttons, old weapons, the crossbow, gloves, crystal, tobacco pipes, and some other weird things. They would be hard to pawn off. Eddie said, yes, I agree. I know those items would not be easy to shift. If there were collectors looking for them, they could be listing wanted items at the antique store. The owner probably wouldn't know the kid and Flip were pushing stolen goods. Or maybe. That's when Barney came outside and thanked us for all our help. His brother would be fine. He just needed to sleep. And when he said that, it hit me a bit funny. I lost one brother, but saved two by proving Barney was innocent. Barney, why howl? I kind of remember howling here when I was younger, but I thought you had a junkyard dog. Grandma would call us the junkyard mutts when it was time to come in and eat. We have always howled back and forth to each other like that since we were little kids because neither one of us know how to whistle. Your car must be parked around back. Jump in the bed of my truck and I'll give you a ride. We saw the kids playing street hockey, and we told him to drop us off there. Barney tried to pay me another $50, but I just asked Barney to keep his eye out for a good working gas kitchen stove and a refrigerator for the Codsworths instead. Donna came running up to the truck. Hey, come. Mud shoes. The two of you are a mess. I told the both of you it's not a good idea to go to the scrapyard after a rain. Don't you think the two of you should go home instead of playing a game of street hockey? Eddie, we have a choice. We can play a game of street hockey in wet, muddy clothes, or go back to the office and do the paperwork. Who has a stick for me? We each took a goalie position. Scrappy or Barney, depending who you ask, showed Donna and Susie the new door and how the locked work. They came back and watched us play. Susie slapped her forehead more than once when we both missed easy blocks. Okay. The two gumshoes need to go back to their day jobs because Susie's going to slap herself silly. Thank you for keeping your promise and coming to play and for helping Scrappy and me so we didn't have to go to jail. You guys are welcome to come and join us at any time.
Now the two of you need to go home and shower really good with lots of soap. That mud will give you a nasty, itchy rash if it stays on you too long. When that mud dries, you will also never get the stains out of your clothes. I better call that into the department so we don't have the whole department out with a rash and stained uniforms. Maybe everyone could use a day off. I asked Donna. Donna, do you want your lawn dart back? No, I don't think so. No, we are going to go a bit higher class and start playing croquet on Saturdays instead. It was Monday morning when I went to work early. Frank wasn't at his corner with his cart yet. I put the coffee going and went to clean the window before Penny saw it. Detective Eddie's car pulled up just as I was finishing. Eddie said, Is the coffee on? I have some information. Sure is, Eddie. What, no work for you today? I took a sick day. They think I came down with an itchy rash. <laughs> Let's head inside. So what information do you have? I'm only telling you this because Barney Phelps was your client. Jimmy Foyer was supposed to steal the stuff, not the kid. A few city council members resigned that were involved in the caper. Should be in the papers tomorrow. Ever hear of Dunwich Housing and Land Development? No. I think we need to wait for Penny so she can write this all down. This is about as messy as the scrapyard after a rain. And that's the end of No Picket Fences. Ten chapters. Hope they all entertained you. Please remember to comment, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for upcoming stories. This is Radio Static Productions, and now ends our broadcast day.